morning everyone and welcome back to our amazing online service here at Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple where the word that's heard can't be explained, only experienced. I just want to remind you all on this morning that the messages that have been preached throughout this pandemic can be viewed on our website at CleburneFGHT.com. Now, on this morning, our pastor is going to be concluding the series entitled Graves into Gardens. This has been a powerful as well as strengthening series. Now, before we go into the word of God, I just want to remind you all that you and your story matter to us here at Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple. But most importantly, it matters to God. Before we go into the word of God, I want to invite you to lift your hands along with me and ask the Lord, Lord, send your word and bless my soul. Bless the souls of the listeners. And Lord, don't let me be the same way that I was before I tuned in. God bless you. to, in my opinion, the most exciting online service in Johnson County, Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple. Here at Cleburne Full Gospel Holy Temple, we want to net, let you know that you matter to God. And if you matter to God, you matter to us. And currently, we're in a series entitled Graves into Gardens. It doesn't matter how bad your situation is. It can look dead. It can be dead. But God has a way of bringing life to a dead situation. And this series has been phenomenal. God has blessed every single service. And we want to land this plane on this morning by really encouraging those that are going through hard times. I know these are unpredictable times with the pandemic and so much going on. There's a lot of people you come to the place where you've lost hope. If you say, Pastor Hawkins, that's me, we have a word that really wants to encourage you on this morning. I wanna come from a topic entitled, Crushed and Overwhelmed. Crushed and Overwhelmed. And I really wanna set it up like this. When I was 13 years old, I went to a basketball camp during the summer. And at the basketball camp, we had different competitions. Through the week, we would qualify to see who can make it to the finals, which took place on Friday. Now, I was in a couple of the competitions. And the good thing was, during the week, I qualified for the finals in two competitions. One was the free throw competition, and the other was the five on five. Now, I was excited all week because I didn't just qualify for one, I qualified for two finals. And I was the heavy favorite to win both. So everything was going good during the week. But then Friday came. The first finals was the free throw. We had to see who can hit the most out of 10. And I remember shooting and I missed three. That's still good. Seven out of ten. The only problem, the person I was competing against hit eight out of ten. So I went all the way to the finals in the free throw competition and I lost. I was disappointed, but I still had another finals, the five on five. So even though I lost the free throw, I still had hope maybe in the five on five, I'd win. So we got to the five on five competition. It literally went down to the last millisecond. We were down by one point. And guess what? I was at the free throw line again. 
I had to hit two free throws, we would have won. But even if I missed one and made, enough, and made one, we would have tied the game and I felt like we really could have beat them in overtime. So I went to the free throw line and I shot the first one and I missed. But I'm like, that's okay. Because hey, I made it to the finals in the free throw competition. So this next one should be a no brainer. It should be easy. And I remember shooting and I remember it hitting the rim and I missed. And we lost the five on five in the finals. So two competitions that I made it to the finals, the free throw and the five on five, we both lost and I lost at the free throw line. Now, if I could describe how I felt in that situation in two words, those two words would have been crushed and overwhelmed. Now, some of you that are listening to me, it's not over a basketball game, but you feel the same way. You say, Pastor Halton, I don't even have to go back five years. Over the past six months, if I can describe how I felt emotionally and psychologically in two words, those words would be crushed and overwhelmed. I mean, when you look at the pandemic that we're in, you have some people that were climbing the corporate ladder, making six figures, but because of the circumstance we're in now, they were used to living a certain lifestyle and then all of a sudden they get laid off and it leaves them in a place where they're feeling crushed and overwhelmed. Maybe you say, Pastor Halton, when it comes to my health, I was doing not too good. I was dealing with something, but then all of a sudden things started to look better. I was getting some momentum but last week I went to the doctor and I found out instead of things getting better, they've gotten worse. And now I'm left in a place where I'm feeling crushed and overwhelmed. Maybe say, Pastor Halton, it seems like I had the picture perfect family. Everything was going good. But in the last six to 12 months, it seems like everybody's lost their mind. And it left me in a place where I feel crushed and overwhelmed. If that's you, this message is for you. Because here's what I found out. When you feel crushed and overwhelmed, many times we come to church or we go to somebody who's spiritual. But you know what I found out? A lot of times when you start battling things like anxiety and depression, you can go to those who are supposed to be sympathetic and instead of them being sympathetic, they'll tell you that you need to do more and try harder. And it leads you to a place where you feel even more crushed and overwhelmed. So I wanna talk about a man in the Bible. His name is Paul. Now there's a lot of people that say, hey, if you're battling depression or if you're battling anxiety or if you feel crushed and overwhelmed, you need to get more spiritual. Other than Jesus, there is nobody that I know in the Bible that was more spiritual than Paul. Because here's the thing about Paul. Paul didn't just know scripture. Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And even though he wrote most of the New Testament, Paul found himself in a place where he felt crushed and overwhelmed. Now, if I were to give this sermon in a sentence, I would use this sentence, which just so happens to be a formula. And this formula can put you on the path to finding the healing that you need. Courage plus clarity plus connection plus reflection equals headed in the right direction. Notice I didn't say courage plus clarity plus connection plus reflection equals being healed. No, because one thing we have to realize about healing, for the most part, healing is a process. 
Now, in the Bible, there are times where Jesus instantaneously healed different ones. He healed blind Bartimaeus instantaneously. He healed the man at the pool of Bethesda instantaneously. But then when we look at the leprous men, Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priest. And the Bible says as they went, they were healed. Some healings take place instantaneously, but then for the most part, some are a process. If you say, Pastor Halton, Saturday morning I was playing basketball and I broke my leg, but it's okay. Because by Saturday afternoon, everything was okay. I would doubt that you broke your leg because something like that takes time. It's a process. It takes time to heal. And if you've been wounded, if you've been hurt, it takes time to heal those wounds. So when I talk about courage and clarity and connection and reflection, when you put those things together, even though you may not be healed instantaneously, putting those things together will put you in a position where you're headed in the right direction. First one I want to talk about is courage. Courage. Now, one of the most frequent chores that's in everybody's household, doesn't matter if you live in a house, a mansion, or an apartment, everybody has to take out the trash. Now, some people, that's their least favorite chore. So what they'll do is they'll let the trash build up. And instead of taking it out, they'll push it down and try to make some more room for some more trash because they don't feel like taking it out. But the problem with that is when you delay in taking out the trash on time and just push it down, you put yourself in a position where you run the risk of the apartment or the house or the mansion uh, stinking or even the trash just running over. In other words, when you push it down rather than take it out, you can make a bigger mess than you would if you had just taken out the trash. And there's some of you, under the sound of my voice right now, you say, Pastor Halton, I got some junk going on in my life. But instead of dealing with that junk, instead of taking it out, what we like to do is we like to suppress it. We like to act like everything is okay and we don't understand we're making the matter worse than it would be if we simply just deal with it and take it out. Paul says this word, this in 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. This is Paul the apostle, the one who wrote a third of the New Testament. Paul, he says, for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. Paul says, I hit my boiling point. I came to a place where I was dealing with something that I couldn't handle. This is the Apostle Paul. He said, I was pressed out of measure above my strength. In other words, I wasn't strong enough to handle this. This thing was above my strength in so much that we despair even of life. Well, if you're battling things like depression and anxiety, then that means you need to get more spiritual. Who was more spiritual than Apostle Paul? And Apostle Paul said, I got to my breaking point. I came to a place in my life where what I was dealing with was above my strength. In other words, I could not bear it. So when we find ourselves in those situations, why is it so hard for us to allow that to come to the surface and actually deal with it? But what we do is we press it down like that trash and we run the risk of it getting worse and worse and worse. Why don't we just deal with it? Three reasons. One, it's pride. I don't want anybody to know that I'm going through. I'm supposed to be so strong spiritually. I'm supposed to be the one to have it together. If I tell somebody that I'm going through, then that's a sign of weakness. My brother and my sister, let me just tell you this. If you 
can admit that everything is not okay, that there are some things going on and you need help, that's not a sign of weakness. That's the sign of ultimate strength. Because somebody that can say, I need help, is somebody that says, you know what? I'm secure enough within myself to realize that I don't have to try to impress anybody. I got a problem. It's more than I can handle. I need help. That actually shows the ultimate security. But some people will never admit they have a problem or never go to somebody for help because of this thing called pride. Another, shame, shame. I don't wanna to admit to anybody I have a problem because sadly, when you tell some people that you have a problem, you end up becoming a problem because people have this mindset. I have my own problems. I don't need to hear anybody else's problem. So what you do is you take your issues and you take your problem and you hold them in, just like that trash. You press it down, press it down, press it down because you're too shameful to tell anybody that, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm dealing with because you are afraid that they may reject you. But here's the thing, and that's where I believe we as the body of Christ have to really step up and be the hands and the feet of Christ. We say it here all, all the time in Cleveland Full Gospel Holy Temple. Every number has a name. Every name has a story. Every story matters to God. If you matter to God, you matter to us. But isn't it something how people can come to church with a broken leg and they can get pity? Or they can, uh, there are people that will be sympathetic because that person has a broken leg. But if they come to church with broken emotions, if they're battling things like depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, insecurity, instead of being sympathetic, we label them weird. So because of that, instead of getting help, they hide it. They hide it out of shame or fear. If I were to tell somebody my problems, what would they think about me? See, they esteem me this high. If I were to tell them that I'm going through this, what is everybody going to think about me? If, if I were to reach out and ask God for help, and somebody actually hears me ask God for help, they're going to think I'm not a strong Christian. So what ends up happening, we don't deal or we don't have the courage to deal with what's going on because of fear of public opinion. What are they going to think about me? How are they gonna feel about me? They're gonna think I'm not as strong as I really am. And when we find ourselves in that place where we don't have the courage, whether it be because of pride, whether it be because of shame, whether it be because of fear, that we don't reach out and say, hey, I need help, we disservice ourselves. But when you have the guts and you have the courage to put pride, shame, fear on the back burner and say, Lord, I need you. Then you put yourself in a good position to find everything that you need in God. Courage. Number two, clear, clarity. Clarity really means the ability to see clear. Just like that trash illustration. You have to understand that that's junk that you're pushing down. It's not a problem, it's not an issue, it's junk. And that's the thing, we give our situations cute nicknames. We say, I have a problem, I have an issue. But really, we're battling depression. Really, we're battling anxiety. But when we're clear about what we're dealing with, then we can deal with it more effectively. Because I'm not in denial that it is what it is. I'm looking for at it for what it really is, and I'm saying this is not a problem, this is not an issue, I'm oppressed, I'm depressed, I'm dealing with anxiety, I'm dealing with insecurity, I'm calling what it is, and I'm not afraid to say that I need help. 
Paul says in the ninth verse, he says, for we would not, brother, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, but we were pressed out of measure. He says, I'm not going to try to act like it was something that it was not. I couldn't handle this thing. I was pressed out of measure. It was above my strength. You know, a lot of people say he'll never put more on you than you can bear. Because they like to reference a scripture in 1 Corinthians when Paul says, There is therefore now no temptation taking you, but such is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. But with that same temptation, he'll make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. But what is he talking about? He's talking about temptation. If you read that whole chapter, he's talking about idolatry. I believe a couple of verses above that, he said God killed 23 fornicators in one day. He's talking about temptation. In other words, what Paul is saying, there is not a temptation through the power of God that you won't have the ability to resist. But when it comes to the trials of life, when it comes to the sufferings that we have to deal with as Christians, there is going to come a time where we're going to face some things that we will not be able to bear. Why would we need a burden bearer if we can bear everything? Why would we need a heavy load sharer if we can carry everything? There are some things that we're going to go through where we say, God, I can't handle this. God, I can't make it through this. If you don't bring me out, if you don't fix this, I'm not going to make it. If you don't pick me up, I'm not going to get up. If you don't turn it around, it's not going to turn around. If you don't take this burden from me, I'm going to succumb under the pressure. So God does not want us so high-minded that we feel like that we, within ourselves, can deal with everything. Sometimes we have to do like Paul said, cast our cares on him. For he careth for us. Matthew 26 and 38. This is what Jesus said. Then he said unto them, My soul. This is Jesus talking. He says, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. He says, I'm so sorrowful. I'm to the point of death. Now, if some Christians are walking around saying that in church, we'll label them crazy. We'll say they're not spiritual enough. But this is Jesus Christ. This is the son of the living God. And he came to a place where he says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. If Jesus had to deal with that, if Paul had to deal with that, there's going to come a time in our life where we're going to face some things that we can't handle. And when those times come, that's when we have to move out of the way and let God have his way. God, I see this thing for what it is. I can't handle it. I can only control what I can't control. And what I can't control, I can just leave it in your hands. And I'm facing something right now, I can't control it. So God, I'm putting this thing in your hands. A songwriter said years ago, while you're trying to figure it out, God is already working it out. And that's why you have to have enough confidence in your God to say, God, I'm going to place this thing right here. I've done all I can do. I'm going to leave it in your hands, and I'm going to watch you turn it around. Courage plus clarity. Third one, connection. Connection. Isn't it something? When we go through things where we feel crushed and overwhelmed, the first thing we want to do is isolate yourself. We want to separate ourselves from the pack. The problem with that is when you start to isolate yourself, you really run into the arms of Satan. Because now when you isolate yourself, you can't hear encouraging words from your brother. You can't hear words that'll lift you up from your sister. And Satan will pull you away, and he'll start whispering in your ear, and he'll start using his nuclear weapon, which is discouragement. That's why we have a saying here at Cleveland Full Gospel, we don't do life alone.
And I want to invite you next week to start out this year. I started this year in a series entitled Table People, where I express the importance of us connecting with our brothers and sisters. The question was asked, who's at your table? And as a matter of fact, on next week, I'm going to start that series so that you that watch us through Facebook and you that watch us through YouTube can hear the importance of connecting to your brother and sister. No man is an island. So when we talk about connection, we talk about connection in two parts. Number one, connection with God. How do I connect with God? We connect with God through prayer. The Bible says men ought to always pray. Let me ask you this. What time of the day do you connect with God? I teach him here in Cleveland for a gospel. You ought to have a daily appointment with God. Pastor Halton, why do you say appointment? We set an appointment for everything else that we deem important. We set an appointment for the doctor. We need to go to the dentist. We set an appointment. If we need to get our hair done, we set an appointment. Well, if we think that those people are so important that we have to set an appointment, what about the true and living God? Do you know God is so powerful that he says in scripture, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So if I make an appointment with anybody throughout the day, I have to have a daily appointment with God. So I connect with God through prayer. I connect with God through reading his word because it's through his word where he reveals himself to us. We ought to daily study his word. I believe God told Joshua, he said, meditate on my word day and night. That's how we come to an understanding of who God is. Prayer and reading the word. What else? Worship. Worship. How often do you worship God? Well, Pastor Halton, what's the difference between praise and worship? I heard somebody put it like this. When I ask God for a new job, and he blesses me with a new job. I praise him for that new job. But you know what worship says? Worship says, if I never get that new job, I'm still going to worship him, not because of what he can do for me, but I worship him because of who he is. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. He's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning and the end. If I never get a new job, if I never get, make six figures, if I never get a new car, if I never live in a mansion, connection with people. You need somebody, especially in this day and time where things are so unpredictable, where so many people are going through trials and tribulations, psychological trials, emotional trials, physical trials, spiritual trials. We need somebody that we can connect with in the spirit to help us go through that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it like this, one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. I know there's a lot of people that have an independent mindset and say, you know what, I don't need nobody. All I need is Jesus. But I wanna show you something in scripture. In Matthew 26 and 36, the Bible says, Then Jesus, then cometh Jesus with them, not by himself, but with them, unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I pray, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and begin to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tear ye here and watch with me. Jesus was in one of the most overwhelming situations known to man, and he didn't try to go by himself. Now, Jesus didn't go by himself. If Jesus understood, I'm not all I need, then what makes you think that you can successfully go through all of your trials and tribulations all by yourself? I said it before, I'll say it again. 
I'll say it till I'm dismissed and go to glory. You cannot do life alone. You have to connect with God and you have to connect with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. After connection, reflection, reflection. Sometimes you have to think back to what God has already done for you. One thing about God, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means if God healed in times past, he can heal today. And if he can heal today, he'll still be a healer tomorrow. Listen to what Paul says. He said, who delivered us from so great a debt? And duh, delivered us. He delivered us before. And he's still delivering us. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He delivered us before. He's delivered us right now. And he'll deliver us in the future. Because if God has done it before, he can do it again. And sometimes you just have to think back on your testimony. You know, somebody preached a message and they asked a question. They said, have you ever had a but God testimony? You say, Pastor Halton, what's a but God testimony? I'm talking about when you're so heavy in your mind. Your back is up against the wall and you're pushed in the corner. It seems like the weight of the world is coming down on you. Seems like everything is falling apart and you're down for the count. But God, when you're sick in your body, and you go to the doctors and the doctors say, there's nothing they can do. And people start getting their funeral arrangements ready. And then some kind of way, God comes through. But God, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver them out of them all. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. You ought to start writing down testimonies about how God healed your body before, about how God regulated your mind before, how God mended your broken heart before, how God lifted that burden off of you before. And after you write that, that testimony down, write this scripture, Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because if he healed you before, if he mended your broken heart before, if he lifted that heavy burden before, the same God that did it, then he can do it right now. You just have to reflect on what God has done for you. Sometimes you have to look at God's track record in your life. Let me ask you this. Has there ever been a trial that God didn't bring you through? Has there ever been a broken heart that God didn't mend? Has there ever been a circumstance that you were stuck in that God didn't pull you out? And if God delivered you then, if God pulled you out then, if God fixed it then, what makes you think he won't fix it today? The Bible says, I believe, in the book of Malachi, God said, for I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. You know why God doesn't change? Because if he can change, that means he can get better. But he can't get better because he's already the best. If God was able to deliver you then, he can deliver you now. We just have to reflect on the goodness and mercy of God. So, you say, Pastor Halton, I'm in a place where I'm crushed and overwhelmed. First of all, have the courage. Have the courage to say, I need help. Quit pushing the trash down. Quit pushing the junk down and say, Lord, I want to deal with this. Now, when you deal with it, deal with it for what it is. That's where you need clarity. Uh, this is not just, I'm not just having a bad day. I'm not just a little nervous. Some of us are dealing with anxiety and depression. Be clear on what it is and say, God, this is the real me. This is my issue. And Lord, I want you to deal with it. Connection. Connect with God. Connect with my brother and sister in the Lord. And then after that, reflection. Write down that testimony. Write the scripture down, Hebrews 13 and 8. 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And tell yourself that if God did it then, he can do it again. And if you put all those together, my brother and my sister, even though healing may not take place immediately, you'll be headed in the right directions. I want to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this word that we just heard. There may be somebody that's watching. They're crushed and overwhelmed. God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking right now, God, give them the mind to have courage. If they need help, give them the bonus to ask for it. Let them have clarity. Let them see the situation for what it is. God, don't let them be afraid to connect, not only with you, but with their brother and sister. God, remind them of how you worked on their behalf in the past. And if you did it then, you can do it now. And God, give them the confidence that if they do all of those things, that even though healing may not come tomorrow, that they're headed in the right direction. They can have the testimony of Job when he said, all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait because a change is coming. In Jesus' name, there may be somebody, you say, Pastor Halton, I'm crushing, I'm overwhelmed. And that was a good message to preach to Christians, but I'm not a Christian. Let me tell you something. If you are not saved, if you don't have Christ ruling and abiding in your life, you can't handle the trials and the circumstances that the devil has come in your way. Notice Romans 8, 28 said, For we know that all things are working together for the good. And a lot of people stop right there. But let me tell you the rest of that scripture. He says, for the good of them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Wherever you are, lift your hands and just say, Father, forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Change me. Deliver me. Take your rightful place in my life. Now make this commitment to him and say, Lord, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, my brother, my sister, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And everything that comes your way, if God brought you to it, He'll give you the strength and the confidence to know that he'll bring you through it. God bless you. I'll see you next week.